Neff, thoroughbred trainer at Santa Anita Racetrack with Aristea and her groom, Beto. She's just getting a little cooling mud applied to her legs after her little workout this morning, just one furlong. This is your racehorse. If you're a club member, if you're a member of the California Thoroughbred Racing Club, here she is. This is your horse. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about pedigree. Her family, great horses in her pedigree, and what that means in terms of our hopes for this filly. Aristea was foaled on January 9th, 2017. You're looking at a copy of the Equibase report on Aristea. They are connected with the Jockey Club in New York, and they also have an office in Lexington, Kentucky. Aristea was first offered for sale as a yearling in the summer of 2018. The high bid of $28,000 did not reach the reserve the consigner Harris Farms had requested. Cynthia and I bought her in the fall sale for $25,000. I felt lucky to get Aristea for $25,000. I felt she was worth actually more than that and didn't think I would get her. Uh, but I will say this, she was uh, rather a homely yearling. She was not real flashy. Uh, her coat was a little long and not so bright and shiny, and, and she was a little shy. Um, and I think it just caught her at an awkward age. She was kind of growing into herself, and she doesn't look anything like this now. So uh, here's a look at her uh, just after the sale when they just started breaking her to saddle. And if you compare these pictures of Aristea to the way she looks now, you wouldn't know it was the same horse. Aristea has had one race for Cincy and I. That was on January 4th of this year. She ran fifth, about in the middle of the pack. That race was a maiden special weight. That's the highest level of competition for horses which have not won a race yet. After several months of hard training, we wanted to give her one or two starts and then give her a break, let her regroup, grow up a little bit, and then bring her back to work, which is what we've done. So she's been training at the farm for a couple of months. They can only do so much work there. The faster speed work we want to do on a safer track under uh, more controlled conditions. So now she's just getting legged up for the uh, Santa Anita surface. We've got about two and a half more weeks of co bone conditioning to do. And then we'll start the speed training and getting her ready to run. Now let's take a look at Aristea's pedigree. You guys are now owners. You're part of the racing industry worldwide. These horses in Aristea's pedigree have a real history. And I think it's important that you are aware of this. And you're going to want to be aware of these uh, family connections when you talk to your friends and your family and you watch racing on TV. Aristea is by creative cause and out of Tamiku. When we say by that refers to the father, the sire, the stallion. When we say out of, that refers to the horse's mother, the dam. So on pedigree.com, we'll start by typing in Aristea's name. There's a second Aristea in the database, so we'll choose the one fold in 2017, who is by creative cause. So when we look at the top data, we see her name, the year she was foaled, her sex, her color, dark bay or brown. And uh, there's a, a line of numbers that refers to a breeding formula that I have absolutely no faith in, but uh, a lot of breeders do. And then we uh, have very little other information. They don't have her race recorded. Their data is not as up to date as Equibase is. We see the breeder and the state she was foaled in. So we can close that. And in blue are the males, the stallions. And of course, creative cause is the sire. We can click on his name. Now we have the pedigree of creative cause. And if you click on that little icon, you can see a lot of information about his racing career and some other notes about his life. Some of the races that he won and it's a little bit about his stallion career. And if you click on this little icon, you can see a photograph of Creative Cause. And if you click on Reports, 
go down to Photos and click that, you'll see all the available photographs of the ancestors of Creative Cause. All the great horses. So you not only have names, you have pictures. You can really get a feel for where this horse came from. And we'll go back to Northern Dancer in this pedigree, click on that name. We get another whole five generation pedigree. And the further back you go, each name you click on will take you further back in time. And each time you'll get another five generations plus pictures if they're available. So we keep going back through the history of thoroughbred racing in this family, and we can go all the way back into the 1600s. And you'll notice that as we go further back, there's less and less information available, of course. Nonetheless, here we are in 1870 when this horse, Doncaster, was foaled, and there's a photograph of him. As we look at Birdcatcher, who was foaled in 1833, we no longer have a photograph. We've got a painting. Birdcatcher was a very important stallion. He's in a lot of major pedigrees to this day. And you'll see some other famous names like Potatoes, uh, P-O-T with eight O's. There's an interesting story behind that. And uh, you can see a picture of him and get a little note about how he got his name. And uh, he is also a very prominent sire, of course, through Birdcatcher. But then you can go back to one of the most important stallions in all of thoroughbred racing, and that is Eclipse. Eclipse was foaled in 1764, and he was a really important stallion. And there's a great story about his incredible life as a stallion and as a racehorse. Uh, I'll give you a little information on that book and another one. But by all means, take a little time, go to this website, explore, and get a feel for where your horse, Aristea, came from. It is a fascinating story. There's incredible information. Don't forget the photographs. They're great. This is a little advertisement for the book Eclipse, and I highly recommend it. It's a, really a terrific story and gives you a feel for the history of thoroughbred racing and how different it was when it first started. You will be astounded when you hear how these horses raced. Two mile heats, sometimes three heats. Unbelievable. Here's another great book on thoroughbred racing, American Classic Pedigrees. Let me explain. Classic races. There are five American Classic races. Worldwide, the classic races of thoroughbred racing are for three-year-olds. In American racing, as opposed to England or Ireland or France, in American racing, you have the three Triple Crown races, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes, plus you have the Kentucky Oaks and the Coaching Club America Oaks, which is for Philly. So derbies are for Colts and Geldings, and Oaks races are for Phillies. This book covers the classics from 1914 through 2002. Uh, it is full of notes on pedigrees, and you can look those pedigrees up on pedigreequery.com to get even more information, but there's all kinds of great anecdotes about these horses and the people who trained them and rode them. It's a great book, but it's a little expensive. It costs actually a little more than the, your share in Aristea. But maybe after she wins us some money, you guys can spring for this book. It's a, highly recommend it. So the last thing I'm going to touch on here is the stallion register from bloodhorse.com. If you go to bloodhorse.com, look up at the top, and in the right-hand area of the uh, banner across the top, you'll see Stallion Register. You can click on that and look up any stallion, including Creative Cause. And you can see all the information here about when he entered stud, who his best runners are, the stud fee, which changes from year to year. When we purchased Aristea, his stud fee was $25,000. it has gone down to fifteen, dollars but I think that might be going up because the value of his yearlings at auction has gone up about 70 percent this year and you can see he's got several graded stakes placed horses and graded stakes winners including grade one winner pavel the toughest races are the graded stakes grade one two and three 
Kentucky Derby, for example, is a grade one stakes. So this is quite an accomplishment. And again, that's going to affect the value of Aristea even when she retires and becomes a broodmare. The next video I'll post is about cowbred horses. Aristea is cowbred registered as foaled in California. That has significant impact on her earnings. She can earn up to $17,000 in bonus money in certain races, including maiden races. So this has a great benefit to you guys as owners and members of the racing club. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining the racing club and good luck at the races. Mm -hmm.